story time about the guy who was obsessed with me. We're going to call him Ryan. Well, Ryan had a crush on me for a long time. And one night, one of our friends asked me to go to a party with them. And Ryan was going to be the GD. And everything was good. We were all having a great time at the party. Well, Ryan and I went off to one of the bathrooms. And we started making out. And while we're making out, he goes, I really want to fuck you, but I can't. And I'm just like, why? And he said it was because he couldn't get it up. And obviously he was embarrassed about it, which is understandable. So I left the bathroom and didn't plan on telling anybody about it. Until I walk over to a group of my guy friends. And they're telling me that apparently Ryan told everybody that we fucked. So at that point, I didn't give a fuck. And I told them what actually happened. AKA that he couldn't get hard. And apparently he was mad at me after that, but I had no idea. So he said, do you still want me to take you home? So I said, yeah. And now that he drove me home, he knew where I lived. And then I got a text from one of his friends, like for part two. Story time, my boyfriend found out that I had an OnlyFans. So my boyfriend and I have been together for probably two years. And I had just turned 18 and we decided that we were going to move in together. We both worked full-time jobs. I was a waitress, he worked at Walmart. And the restaurant that I worked at was literally a two-minute walk from Walmart. And I was forced to get a job there by my boyfriend because he had super bad trust issues. I know you guys are going to be like, oh, well, I can see why. No, no. It was because of this rumor that went around right before we graduated that me and his best friend made out at a party. Ciao. Anyways, back to the story. So then COVID hit. And it got to the point where him and I couldn't pay our bills or anything like that. So he got a job working for his uncle. And I went on unemployment, but it still wasn't helping. But my best friend was a stripper. And she told me that she had an OnlyFans account and that she was making really good money off of it. So since I was home every day doing absolutely nothing, I decided that I would make an OnlyFans account. And I didn't tell my boyfriend about it, like for part two. Part two about how my boyfriend found out that I had an OnlyFans. So like I said, I made the OnlyFans and I didn't tell him about it. And I was only putting stuff on there like twice a week. But then my friend promoted me and I started making a lot more money. But then I started putting stuff on there every time that my boyfriend would go to work. So a month goes by and my boyfriend realizes that I have way more money than I did before. And he keeps asking me about it, but I tell him don't worry about it. Which definitely seemed really sus. Anyways, the one day while he's at work, I'm taking some pics for my OF. And I'm blasting my music. And I turn around and lo and behold, who do you think was standing in the doorway? My boyfriend. And he has his phone out and he's recording me. So then he started explaining to me that because since I gave him such bad trust issues and I wouldn't tell him where I was getting the extra money, he set up cameras in the house. And he's been watching me for two weeks straight. And he's still recording on his phone at this time. So we broke up and now there's a video of me half naked on YouTube and him exposing me. Story time, my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend. So my boyfriend and I have been dating for two years, but we were on and off all the time. It was a super toxic relationship. Like he would try to get with other girls and I would try to get with other guys to make him jealous, blah, blah, blah. Well, a week before Christmas, him and I broke up again. And I had my best friend sleep over that whole week because her parents were in Ireland. And my boyfriend lived right down the street from me. Like it was probably a two minute walk to his house. Well, for the first three nights, my best friend would go on a jog every night and she would be gone for like two hours. I would literally have to go unlock the door at one in the morning for her to get back in my house. Well, I think the third night that she slept over, she came back in different clothes. And I realized that the sweatshirt she was wearing was my boyfriend's favorite sweatshirt. But I didn't really think anything of it because she never really showed interest in my boyfriend. But clearly I was oblivious. Anyways... So that same night, I wake up in the middle of the night and she's on the phone with someone. And it sounded exactly like my boyfriend. So I asked her who it was, but she couldn't give me an answer, like for part two. Part two of how my boyfriend cheated on me with my best friend. So she told me not to worry about it, and I was like, alright, whatever. So the next day, my boyfriend shows up at my house asking to get back together. Not a surprise, by the way. And of course I said, okay, we can be back together, blah blah blah. So that night while I'm in my room, my best friend's on the phone, and she has her AirPods in, so I couldn't hear who it was. And she was like, okay, I'll be there in five minutes. And when I asked her where she was going, she wouldn't tell me. Well, she left her phone at my house. And because she usually tells me everything, I thought that something sus was going on. So I went through her phone. And I see that she's been texting this guy Jay a lot. 
And as I'm going through their conversation, there's one text that says, I don't care if she finds out. Just sneak over to my house while you're there. So I check the phone numbers and obviously it's my boyfriend. And her parents are really strict, like she was only supposed to be at my house that week, nowhere else. So I may have made up some stories that she had drugs in her bag and that she was forcing me to do drugs with her. So her parents came home early from their trip. They sent her to military school and I broke up with my boyfriend. Story time, my parents found out that I was dating a white boy. So a little background information. My parents are super strict, especially my dad. And on top of that, my dad thought that races should not mix. One of his sayings was, you don't see a blue jay fucking a pigeon. AKA, white people and black people should not be together. Sounds fucking stupid. Yeah, I know. Anyways, like I was saying, it was my freshman year of high school and I had been dating this boy for two months. And of course, he was white. And we had to keep it super low-key because if any of my friends found out about it, they would have fucking told my dad. Now when I look back at it, those weren't good friends at all. Anyways, every Friday, my boyfriend and I would go to the movies. And we would go to this theater that was 45 minutes away because nobody that I knew would be there. The only person that knew that I was dating a white boy was my sister. Well, the one day after the movies, I couldn't get a ride home, so I had to get a ride home with him and his family. And as soon as I pulled up, my parents were waiting outside, like for part two. Part two about how my parents found out that I was dating a white boy. So like I said, my sister couldn't come pick me up, so I had to get a ride with him and his family. And what do you know, as soon as we pull up to my fucking house, my dad is standing on the porch waiting for me. So I told his parents to drive around the block one more time while I called my sister and told her to distract my dad. So as we're driving up to my house again, I see that my dad isn't on the porch. So I run into the house before he could see me getting out of a white boy's car. So a few months go by and we're still dating, very low key. And the one night at three in the morning, I get woken up by my sister. And she says, you better delete any pictures that you have of you and you know who off your phone. And you better come up with the story right now. Because one of your friends took pictures of you walking with him in the hallways and kissing him behind the stairwell at school. So after I deleted everything off my phone, a few seconds later, my dad came into my room screaming his head off. He was so mad. I ended up getting my ass beat. And I also got grounded from my phone for four months. But after that, my mom ended up leaving my dad. And then him and I got back together. Part two about the guy who was obsessed with me. So like I said, as soon as I got dropped off, his friend Ella texted me. And she was like, oh, it was so wrong for you to say that he couldn't get it up and a bunch of other nonsense. And I just brushed it off and I was like, whatever. So I went to sleep and the next morning that I woke up, so my house had like a gate to get in and there were locks on it and all the locks were broke. And my stepdad also saw that he slashed my fucking tires. I ended up telling him everything that happened that night and my stepdad's 32 and Ryan's 22. So they're only a 10 year difference. He basically gave me an option. He was like, either I can call the cops or I can go beat this kid's ass. I was like, okay, just call the cops. So we called the cops and they ended up catching him on the surveillance camera, like of him breaking the locks and slashing my tires and everything like that. So then they found him and arrested him. And let me get this straight. If he just wouldn't have lied about it, then it would have never came out that like he couldn't get it up. He just had to go and tell everybody that we fucked. Story time about my shitty ass ex-boyfriend. So a little background information. My ex and I have been dating for about two years. And throughout those two years, he was a dick. He would cheat on me, talk to other girls more than me. But of course, I pretended that everything was perfect in my relationship. I would brag to all these people about how my relationship was so good, blah, 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 and everything else. Because it's embarrassing whenever bitches can talk shit because your relationship is very toxic. Like, listen to this bullshit. The whole two years we were dating, I had over 10 girls DM me on Instagram saying that they screwed my boyfriend at his house. I never confronted him about it. I was just one of those girls that cared way too much about what everybody else thought. Okay, now fast forward. And it was a Friday at school and Thanksgiving break was the following day. And him and I have this whole plan to spend the whole break together because literally a week before that, he was on vacation in North Carolina for two whole weeks. Well, instead of going with him after school, I decided to go home, get an overnight bag like for part two. Part two about my shitty ex-boyfriend. So like I said, the original plan was for us to go together to his house after school. But I was like, I'm going to be spending the whole week over there. I should probably pack some clothes and get a shower. So after school, he drove me to my house. And he said that his parents wanted to have dinner together. So he had to go back to his house. And he would pick me up later. So when I got to my house, I got ready and everything, blah, blah, blah. And by this time, it was like 8 o'clock. 
still i kept texting and calling him asking him where he's at if he's coming to get me still then i realized that none of my text messages were going through so then i go to text him on snap and what do you know i couldn't find him on there and then i call him off my mom's phone he answers the phone and hangs up right away well we were supposed to have a little party at his house too that all of my friends were going to so i texted every single one of them none of them answered the phone and i remembered that my one friend had shared her location with me before so i went and looked at her location and where was she at my boyfriend's house so while i sat at home crying that whole week he was throwing parties and cheating on me with my friends and when we went back to school he acted like we were never in a relationship